Hey guys, welcome in this tutorial where we're gonna control a self-balancing robot using the LQR regulator in Simulink. This is a super important subject if you are an engineering student, a robotics hobbyist or a control system engineer. So before we begin, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and activate the notification bell. It's absolutely free and you can always change your mind. And without any further ado, let's begin. So the LQR stands for a Linear Quadratic Regulator, which is a feedback controller that is designed for achieving a desired output of the system while minimizing the necessary cost for achieving this output. Like we said in the intro, we are going to use this regulator to control a self-balancing robot in Simulink. We already made a video on how to build this robot, and in that video, we used the PID controller to achieve an upright pose. However, one of my subscribers suggested that I use an LQR regulator instead. So here we go. So first things first, we're gonna need the mathematical model of the robot or the plant as referred to in the books. Next we need the Q and R weighting parameters that basically dictates how much energy we want to spend to get to the desired performance. And finally we will feed the mathematical model and the Q and R parameters to the MATLAB function LQR that generates the feedback gain which we will need to stabilize our robot. So regarding the mathematical model, you can easily find one online. So we'll just put this simple model I found. The link is in the description box uh, by the way. As you can see, it's represented by these four matrices A, B, C and D. Now here's the most important step in this implementation. And you need to do this correctly, right? You don't want to mess this up. The parameters need to be extracted from your robot. Don't just put random values or else this is not gonna work as it's supposed to. So I'm gonna head now to my Simulink model and extract the parameters. The mass of the chassis is the sum of all parts that makes the chassis. So the shelves, we have three of them, one fourth of a kilogram each and uh, we have four pillars which are one sixteenth of a kilogram each so the total mass of the chassis is one kilogram the mass of the wheels and the shaft I already know it's 200 grams the next parameter is the friction forces of the joints I suggest you just put 0 0.1 as it's hard to measure this in real life the moment of inertia of the chassis can be calculated by this equation and again I'm putting all this code and information in the description box, so don't worry about memorizing any of this. The gravity acceleration is of course 9.8 meters over second squared. And finally, the distance from the wheel center to the chassis center of gravity, you can find it by just opening the mechanics explorer by pressing Ctrl D on the keyboard, and you click on the little icon on the toolbar, and this will allow you to see the center of gravity. In my case, it's just in the middle of the chassis, so I'll put 12.5 cm since the chassis is 25 cm in length. And by doing this, we all set and ready for the next step. The Q and R parameters can be set to whatever the user desire. For example, the basic case where we consider the desired outputs and the actuator efforts are equally important, these values are used where we put 1 in the place reserved for the robot angle and position in the Q matrix and we put and assign R to 1. Now all our preparations are made. All we need to do at this point is to call the LQR function in MATLAB and feed the calculated matrices and parameters to it as arguments. And the result will be this gain matrix that we will use from now on in Simulink. Up until now, this model worked with the PID controller. For now, we just delete the PID block because we won't be needing it anymore. And also we clean this area a little bit. As shown in the illustration, we need to multiply the robot state vector x by the gain minus k. And then we take this signal and feed it to our actuators, which is in this case the prismatic joint. The x-vector comprises of the robot inclination angle 
and its angular velocity, which you can get it from the Rivolo joint. And also the robot position and velocity which are extracted from the prismatic joint. We make sure each physical signal runs through this physical to simulink block and we group all of them together using the multiplexer block. Next we take the output of the multiplexer and attach it to the gained block which use the variable k that we calculated earlier. Make sure this is minus k and set the multiplication type to matrix multiplication. We also add this signal to the disturbance signal that we create using the step block and finally attach the resulting signal to the prismatic joint using a simulink to physical block. Finally, we run the model, and in the Mechanics Explorer we can see that our robot is successfully stabilizing itself, after the initial disturbance caused by the step block. Of course you can tweak the Q and R parameters to obtain a different response, or to spend less energy. And in the end of this video, I once again ask for your support, so subscribe, share this video with your friends and colleagues, and stay safe, I'll see you in another video with another idea, goodbye.